Welcome to this month's edition of Nest Builders. We are absolutely thrilled to have you joining us today. A special shout out to all our amazing families tuning in from the Nest schools all across the country. And thank you for being such a vital part of the Nest family. I'm Sarah Beer, your Director of Core Values here at the Nest Schools, and I couldn't be more excited about today's episode. Why, you ask? Because we're diving into a topic that hits right at the heart of one of our favorite core values, mm -hmm. wellness. Today, I'm joined by Brittany Madonna, our Senior VP of Marketing and Communications, and we've got two incredible guests today, our dear friends and Nest Wellness coaches from Model Mindset Fitness and Coaching, John Hunter and Brian Giacconi. We're about to have an awesome discussion all about family wellness, so grab your favorite healthy beverage, get comfy, and let's get into it. But before we dive in, John and Brian, why don't you kick things off by telling us a little bit about Model Mindset Fitness and Coaching and your backgrounds? Well, we would love to. Well, first off, thanks so much for having us. It's, it's great being your wellness coaches and great being here with you guys today on Nest Builders. Uh, to give you guys some background, you know, Brian and I have been friends now for almost 20 years, which is surprising because we're 21 years old, clearly. So, um, but we've been friends for a very long time here, and um, which made the transition from just being friends to business partners a lot easier. But um, our journey really started with, with personal development in our own lives. Uh, we wanted to make our own lives more fulfilling and better. And in that process, uh, really started to develop ideas for a potential business. So at our heart and at our core, we are personal trainers. It's who we are. It's, it's what we've always loved and had been passionate about. That's kind of where it all started for us. It started us in a fitness-based mindset in business where we were strictly running camps, um, you know, physical camps, speed and agility camps for towns, all these different things. Um, but in that process, we found ourselves really, really falling in love with the mindset process of things because we were applying it in our own lives and we were seeing the dividends that it had in our own lives. So. Um, once we really started to understand that better, we thought, well, we have to incorporate this in our programs. We have to. It, it's, it means a lot to us. We know it'll mean a lot to other people. But who were those people was the question. And ironically enough, we look inside of our own homes. And uh, we say that because both Brian's wife and my wife are in the education field. Brian's wife is a, is a physical ed teacher in South Windsor. Uh, my wife works for the Nest with you guys here. So um, we knew the, the stresses, the trials, the tribulations, the good days, the bad days, right? Um, but we knew that what we had to offer could certainly help the world of education and educators specifically. So we developed a program called self Educare, which uh, primarily was teaching educators about self-care and stress management. And that's that snowballed into where we were able to meet you guys um, when you guys reached out and asked us to be your wellness coaches. Um, which was another little wrinkle, right? Things just tended to evolve over this year and a half, two years. And now we're your wellness coaches here for the Nest. And um, we certainly love doing that. It's a great challenge. It's a it's a great experience to interact with people around the country um, to get, try to get them to be the best they can be both physically and mentally. And that kind of shows you wellness expands and, and it covers a lot of ground. It can be from children, um early ages and it can be through adults with all different trials tribulations backgrounds and all that stuff so wellness is applicable everywhere which is what we're going to get into today wow wow you guys are doing a lot not just for us but also for your local community and that's great um thank you guys for introducing yourselves we're so glad that you're here with us to talk about this topic um getting started with creating healthy habits and overall healthy family can have its challenges. Can you talk to us a little bit about the biggest hurdle in both families and individuals um, adopting a wellness mindset? Yeah, so I, I think there's maybe a misinterpretation of, of what wellness is um, because we live in a society now where we want instant gratification on stuff. We want things now. And when things take time or you don't receive instant gratification, what that does is it makes you resort back to what you know or your old habits, okay? So the process with wellness is you have to understand that this isn't an easy bake oven, right? It's not going to be done in three minutes. What it's going to be is time, attention, and like Brian said, reps. So we're personal trainers, like we said. That's, that's everything we go back to is based on our fitness background. And it takes reps when you're when you're in the gym, so to speak, and, and you're going there, you're doing multiple reps 
for an extended period of time to see the dividends of that. And when it comes to your physical body, that's what it takes. But also when it comes to your mental capacity and, and your mental wellness and health, that's what it takes. It takes reps. So I think the misinterpretation a lot of times is that, oh, I'm going to do these practices or I'm going to do these workouts or I'm going to, I'm going to meditate or I'm going to journal. And then after three or four days, I still kind of feel stressed. I don't, I don't feel the greatest still, you know, I'm still trying to work through these things. This doesn't work. And then you stop. And that's the biggest mistake people make is they stop because again, it's, it takes time and over time, you're going to see those changes. And Brian and I can speak to that firsthand. It took time. We are, we are two, two and a half years into our own personal journeys and we are learning things to this day that we are applying and things are just paying off now that we've been doing for years and it just it makes it that much more important and special when it pays off but i think the biggest misconception and the biggest hurdle that people will encounter is they think it takes one day when in reality it takes every day absolutely um how do you think families can start to become healthier that's a great question. And and so I always operate, and I would say we do, we always operate from keep it simple, right? And it starts off with a conversation between you and your spouse. Because in order to start a healthy journey, you need to be on the same page. And that's where we see there is a common disconnect. When we're training people and I hear, you know, oh, my, my spouse isn't being supportive. And, I'm, and I ask why, they'll say, well, that are leaving these snacks inside the cupboard, you know, and I'm going for them. And so I simply ask, did you tell them not to have them around? No, they should know. It starts off with a conversation. The conversation is where you sit down with your spouse and you say, I believe that our family needs to become better and prioritize wellness. And that's the big word is prioritize wellness. Then you have to go into what does that look like from both perspectives? Because each person is different. One spouse may have a vision of eating healthy three meals a day, five days a week, where the other spouse may say, hey, let's have a healthy dinner three days out of the week. You need to come to a negotiation, especially when fall is approaching sports, especially kids sports. I myself have two boys that are going to be playing soccer. Me and my wife, what we do every week is we plot out the grocery list. Monday through Friday, we write down exactly what we're going to do for dinner. Then we divide and conquer. So there's going to be certain dinners that I'm going to be responsible for because my wife's schedule doesn't allow it. Then there's going to be other days where she's the primary cook. This way there, we're both providing guidance on what we feel is a healthy journey for our family. And then also another thing is, you know, I'm focusing on nutrition aspect of it, but you also want to incorporate the physical side of it too. So talking about walks, or we like to go to the park as a family. And it's funny because if you look at the families at the park, inevitably you're going to see families where they're sitting down maybe on their phone, which is fine because sometimes your kids may be old enough where they can go play. For me and for my wife, we use that as our time to also be active. So we will go and, and my son call him, hey daddy, can you be the shark? So that way there, I'm getting some exercise, I'm getting some steps in. So it's all about making it easier on yourself. And the easiest way and the best way to start is to having a conversation with your spouse so that you both have visibility and transparency into what a healthy family looks like. Brian, you really hit home with me on getting on the same page with your partner because that is a constant, um, you know, it was a battle for my husband and I for, for a long time. You know, he would go to the grocery store with the kids and they would convince him to buy, you know, a food that I wouldn't necessarily buy with them. And so we really had to sit down and kind of have a conversation of like, we could not have all of this in the house. And it even trickled down to the grandparents because, you know, they would go to the grocery store and, you know, buy like little Debbie's cakes that they thought would be fun for the kids to have. And, when it's in the house, the kids want to eat it. So I really kind of had to set those boundaries, um, not only with my husband, but with other family members of kind of, you know, what we were trying to do as a family. And then um, more recently with my older son, just trying to incorporate, you know, overall wellness 
we found that we were trying to, um, if it, it wasn't sticking unless he was kind of coming up with his own plan. So we even mm -hmm. turned it around of like, you need to do something every day. What, what are some ideas you have? So it wasn't just mom and dad, mm -hmm. um, you know, coming up with his own routine. And, and that's something that we are, we are newly starting, but it has been better and more well received than us dictating what that should look like. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's funny too, Brittany is, is, you know, I have younger kids, but as you can attest to, you want to make sure as your kids get older, that they're a part of the discussion as well don't view them as like you don't value their input because it is important. Some kids may really want to eat French fries and chicken fingers, but you can make that into a healthier version. You can make roasted potatoes and you can maybe make grilled chicken or bake the chicken, you know, so you can still value their input, still make what they would eat, but just have a healthier spin on it mm -hmm. and making them a part of the conversation, especially when it comes to movement. I know right. You know, my boys love playing soccer, so we kick around the ball a lot. We we got this really cool. My parents actually got in this rocket launcher game, where they'll jump on the rocket and it'll shoot up in the sky. And so we, I made a simple game where you got to catch it. Little do they know, they're running around. They're using different muscles that they don't normally use, but that's that's movement. And so simple games like that, it, it's really cool to incorporate as well. And it's important to celebrate the wins in the process too, right? So if you make a great meal. Like you were saying, Brittany, you know, the different decisions were made on the grocery list and it paid off with a really, really good meal. And mm -hmm. celebrate like that. Talk about that. Talk about it openly as a family or, or just be excited about it. Hey, like, what should we make next? Right. Like use that as momentum. And a lot of times we forget to celebrate all the little small wins along the way in the process of having a healthier life and living a healthier life. Um, and we don't give ourselves enough credit. You know, so celebrate small wins along along the way. That's what's going to really catapult the family into really getting momentum into a healthier lifestyle. That's awesome. And you mentioned going to the park. You mentioned, um, you know, making up those games with that rocket launcher. Uh, what other activities uh, can you incorporate as a family that will benefit the health around your family? Yeah, I would say understand what your kids enjoy, but also what understand what you enjoy. You know, I'm fortunate enough that I live close to a hiking trail. Um, so my butt, my my son, when it was his four year old birthday, I took him out and we were um, looking for bears. So I had him dress up in his favorite Ninja Turtle outfit. You know, he was Raphael. We brought some Cheerios as bear food and he brought his nunchucks for Michelangelo. And he was super excited. Little did he know. He just walked a mile all on his own. And then I put him on my shoulders. But we had, you know, he's only four, but we had great conversation. He was super into it. So making it fun. If there's something that maybe you enjoy doing when you were a kid and you haven't done it in a while, start incorporating that around fitness. You know, there's, I saw something on Instagram where it was two of the parents made this kind of like circuit style training. Now that may be a little much and a little intimidating, but it, all they really had were like four cones and they were just like jogging around it, playing tag, doing little things. I mean, the game of tag, that is so much fun. And sometimes we forget that we can be a kid just like our kids. They're super creative. They, they use their imagination well. Let's go back and be kids and start playing more. Mm -hmm. And so I would just really focus on the play aspect. And really, the world is your buffet when you come at it from that, from that kind of lens. For sure. That's so true. That's so true. I know my kids, um, their favorite is like, we can't just go to the playground. They Now they want to play tag on the playground. And yeah. a lot of times we get a lot of other people involved too, but it is yeah. a good reminder that we need to go back to our childhood sometimes. Sure. Um, but okay, let's be real for a minute. We know that life can get very busy between work and sports and, uh, you know, family activities and everything in between. And sometimes we forget to care about, you know, us so we can show up as our best self. And um, I want to spend a little bit of time just kind of talking about self-care. But I do think there is the perception that a lot of people struggle with that sometimes self-care can seem selfish. And people can oftentimes have guilt when it comes to that. Um, so what are some suggestions or recommendations um, 
around self-care and kind of overcoming that that fear of guilt of taking time for yourself that you might have for say. Yeah, for sure. It's 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 so true. Um, you know, there it's really not a fine line between selfish and self-care. It's a pretty broad line. And and we want to draw that with for you guys here. And what we mean by that is we want you guys to understand and everyone listening that it takes prioritizing time to incorporating self-care, right? But what we trick ourselves into thinking is that if we are taking time from cup A, which is ourselves, um, and we have cup B, which is others, if we're trying to fill more of cup A, that must mean we're taking from cup B, which means we're in reality robbing our time with others, doing other things, going other places. But that's primarily not the case. And we don't want it to sound intimidating, but we oftentimes let the people know who we're working with, you don't realize how much time you actually have until you start making your time as useful as possible. So when, when you wanna prioritize your self-care, whether that means working out, whether that means something like maybe going to get your nails done, if, if, if you like that stuff, or getting a massage, or, or going for a hike, or whatever it is, you have to designate the time for it. And you do that by prioritizing all the other time around it. And it doesn't need to be taking it from others. So for example, if you wanna do things that you can do, if we have kids before our kids wake up or after our kids go to sleep, prioritize those windows of time a little bit better, right? Maybe don't sleep that extra hour and a half, which is, which is really hard for some people, right? Um, Maybe it means not going to sit on the couch with our phones for two hours before bed, right? After the kids go to bed, which a lot of people do because they consider that to be them unwinding, right? But there's a lot of time wasted in the intermediate. And we want everyone to know again that if you want to feel better and you want to be your best self, you have to prioritize the time for your self-care. And that by no means is selfish. So take a look at your day. Everyone has that eight to five usually that we have to work around. And we, then we have kids and that, that shrinks time. But the biggest you know, thing we always tell our clients is you don't have time, you make time. And that's, that's where you're gonna find the windows of opportunity for you to not only you know, prioritize and utilize self-care, but then feel better and be able to, like you said there, Brittany, be your best self. Because right. that's going to show up in every other window of time throughout your day. That's so true. I have found that if I, I'm, I'm a, you have to do it first time, first thing in the morning, or your day will slip by. And it, mm -hmm. for some people that aren't morning people, sometimes the night can be, you know, can be better. But mm -hmm. um, it is that those are all super valid points. Um, you know, what are some examples of how you feel like self care can positively impact? you and your family? When we think about self-care and when it, whether it be going to a nail appointment or actually physically exercising, it's a chance to recharge our batteries. It's a chance to focus on ourself, right? It's almost as though everything around us is kind of quieted and it's just our time for ourselves. And so if we think about fitness, what you're doing is when you're actually exercising, you're releasing the feel-good hormones, endorphins. You actually feel better. And so what you're doing is you're improving your energy. And when people say, well, I'm tired, I don't have time to exercise because I'm too tired, it does the opposite. Moving will actually give you energy. It also provides you with focus, right? It makes you motivated. If you think about it, Brittany, when you uh, move in the morning, you feel energized. You're more apt to get productive things done right in the morning, right? That's that's me and John, we also like to work out in the morning. You set the tone for your day. But as John was talking about before, about filling up your cup first so then you can give to others, it, I call it the trickle effect. You're able, it, when you prioritize your self-care, it's going to positively influence other areas of your life, like your family, like your work, your friendships, right? Your relationships you're more willing to give energy into those other facets of your life so that when your kids get home from school or from daycare, you have energy to go play with them. And that's huge because they'll remember that. I know my fondest memories as a kid was playing soccer with my mom 
or playing basketball with my dad and crossing him up and having him fall <laughs> and leaving a sweat stain on the love you dad <laughs> on the on the pavement. But I remember that because I cherish that. And it's my parents could only do that because they prioritized their health. And so, like John said, fill your cup up first. It's like when you're on an airplane. Put your mask on first and then help others. Same thing with self-care. Prioritize your self-care so that you can give a better version of yourself to those ones that you love most around you. Right. And th those are all really great points that you've made. Um, and I know, you know, we've, we've talked a little bit about self-care kind of having, you know, everybody has different ways of self-care and what that means to them. Is there, is one more, is there a difference between physical and mental self-care and is one more important than the other, in your opinion? This is a really, really good question. Um, this is a debatable question, but. <laughs> and, exactly, right, and, and to each is their own here. Um, but coming from, from two people who've been doing this for a little while and have talked to a lot of people, um, we have a saying that we tell to everyone that's fitness is medicine for your mind, okay? And we're, we say that because of the clarity that we receive through our movement provides us a lot in our lives mentally. So, and, and I'll, I'll preface that with a story, okay? So Brian and I have, have been doing this thing, like you said, for about two, two and a half years now. And about, uh, about a year ago, or a little over a year ago, Brian approached me and he said, I think we should do a half marathon, okay? Your boy is not a runner. Never was a runner, never liked running, okay? Um, and he knew that. So he, he brings up, let's do a half marathon. And I'm looking at him like a half marathon. You want me to run 13 miles? Um, granted, I felt like I'm in good shape, right? But running is a different animal. Brittany, you know this. Running is yeah. a different animal. So, um, and at that point, it was like, it was something new. It was something scary. Um, and that was all the reasons that I needed to do it. So we do the half marathon. Things go well. I feel great doing it. I felt, I felt, um, you know, the training leading up to it was fantastic. It was about three or four months of training. Perfect. We did the half marathon. It went well. Awesome. And I, and I enjoyed it. We had two, three weeks later, I'm thinking, all right, been there, done that running, John, you did great. In comes Brian. I think we should do a full marathon. I'm still sore from a half marathon. And I'm looking at him like, you must be crazy. But here we are. Now we're going to go into five months of marathon training. And this past May, we ran our first marathon. And I'm saying all of that to say this. In that process, we had to do a lot of the things maybe we didn't want to do. For me personally, I know that for sure, which meant getting up at four o'clock in the morning to get out on the trail for five, to run for three hours, and, and to do that every Saturday. And it's easy to have the motivation if you're hearing this and, and if you're, you, you watch a reel online or of someone working out or eating healthy, it's easy to have that motivation. But that motivation, that flame will flicker and dissipate over time. And you have to develop the discipline in order to do it. And it's easy to be warm in bed, you know, like a little croissant on Saturday morning, not wanting to get out. But the clarity that we gained on those runs training to provide us in our business, in our personal lives, in our professional lives, all these, all these great conversations we'd have on our runs helped us mentally, immensely. And that was almost you know nine, 10 months of just us running, but it did so much more for me mentally than it ever did for me physically. And so that would lead me to tell anyone who's starting Start physically in some capacity because you're never going to regret at the end of a workout that you worked out. You're never going to say, I wish I didn't do that. You're going to feel great. You may be a little sweaty and achy, but you're going to feel mentally great by it. And I can speak firsthand on that for, for someone who's not a runner who committed to doing something like that because of this guy here. Um, I never once regretted a run. So I, I, I would preface all of that with saying start with start with physical activity and you're going to see the dividends on how what it does for you mentally. Uh, it, it's it's really impactful.
And, and just to add to that point as well, you know, we we're fortunate enough to have uh, Dr. Um, Mohauser and uh, Lori Singer on our podcast, mm -hmm. Model Mindset, and they're both licensed family therapists. And the first thing, a part of their, um, what would you call that, like program yeah. for their clients is exercise. Because research is showing now that exercise can be just as effective as antidepressants. Now, I'm not saying people that are on antidepressants to get off your medicine and go exercise mm -hmm. and you're going to be cured. But what I'm saying is even licensed family therapists are, are making sure that exercise is a part of the program to have them feel better because they know the benefits of that will help improve your mood. The greatest of all time, Tony Robbins, he said, in order to change your focus, you have to change your state. So if you're focused on something that is disempowering, you get up, change your state, whether it be for go for a walk, get up and yell, that's changing your state, which is changing what you focus on. So for us, it's always going to be focusing on the physical side because we know that the mindset will follow as well. Right. And I, I think one of the things that you said that is um, really true to your story that kind of made you follow through on your commitment as you had an accountability partner, you know, Brian was like, we're going to do this. So I do think that's a great way just to even have your family, you know, work with your family and have your family be your own accountability partner. If you're trying to get family wellness um, going is, you know, make that commitment as a, as a family and tell your kids to call you out if you're not, you know, following through on what your plan is and, or your partner or whatever it may be, I think that can be super powerful and sticking to those commitments that you make as well. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I can speak for our staff at the nest schools, you know, they are doing your program as well. And when we say fitness is medicine for the mind, it's absolutely true. Um, we do surveys about this and our staff, every single one that has taken the survey has said that they feel better after um, getting the content that you get, which is both mindfulness and physical movement. So, yeah. um, absolutely. Yeah, and, and and it's quickly. We tell everyone, and we told everyone in the program here at the Nest that we're not here to focus on a number on a scale, right? That's not what this is about. This is about you feeling better today than you did yesterday. And if you're making progress in that and you feel good, then we're doing our jobs. So simplify it, right? It, simplify things. If you feel good, you're on the right path and then stick to that. Absolutely. All right. Now that we've unpacked the importance of self-care and shifting those old mindsets, let's talk about another aspect of wellness that ties right in healthy eating. <laughs> now I'm guilty. I am not the healthiest of eater, but we know that um, what we eat plays a huge role in how we feel both physically and mentally. So let's be honest, balancing those busy schedules while trying to prepare nutritious meals for the whole family can feel like a real challenge. Um, I, I'm personally speaking to that. Um, so what are some tips for making healthy eating, not just a priority, but a fun and manageable part of our family's daily routine? Yeah, so I would first again, you know, start off with plotting out the week, understand what you have for the week going on, whether it be sports, also what your spouses have on ensure that you know who is going to be running point on cooking and make sure that the meals are quick and easy. So for example, you could always, you know, I know John is, is huge, so am I in a meal prepping. We normally choose a day that will meal prep, but you can do grilled chicken. You can make it in batches. You can do vegetables. I like to roast a lot of vegetables. Um, me and my wife will kind of divide and conquer when we meal prep. So she may handle the majority of the proteins i may do a lot of the vegetables and i'll cook some like rice or something for a nice healthy carb but it, again it's coming out with kind of like a script and also if your kids are old enough make them a part of it as well my boy my oldest son who's four theo for some reason he enjoys kind of cleaning the dishes <laughs> Thank God, but yeah, you know, you know, yeah, <laughs> some of the dishes, you know, the glass stuff, you know, we'll have him stay away from, but he enjoys doing it. So he'll kind of start to help clean up. Uh, but it's also kind of if you're trying to make the family a part of it, kind of give them tasks to help so that they do feel a part of it, that they're contributing 
to a healthier version of their family and so that they can be proud as well. So I would say maybe having, you know, this may sound weird, but maybe have like certain assignments like, hey, honey, you're part of grilling the proteins. I'll handle all the vegetables. Um, little Johnny, how about you handle the rice cooker, which is very simple. You know, that way there, they're feeling like a part of it. But I would say that. Yeah, for sure. And another fun thing you could do is, um, you know, a family garden, right? So let let your the people in your home see the product of your hard work, right? And then be able to consume it on the back end. That, that's interesting. My girls have been asking for a garden now for the past two summers. Um, we haven't done it and I regret it at the end of every summer. I'm like, yeah, we should have done the garden. Like it would it'd be perfect. Um, but it's a great way to just incorporate something from start to finish in your house like that. If that gets buy-in. That's the biggest thing you need when you're trying to start any kind of journey, especially a health journey, is you need buy-in. And we talked about it at the beginning of the episode here. Everyone needs to get on board and you need a support group. And then like you said, Brittany, there, you need accountability. Um, everything that that goes into it is buying. And I think when you see that from start to finish, especially with the garden, that could be fun to do, right? Uh, you can have whatever you want growing inside of your home or outside your home there. So another really good option, aside from cooking together, is, is growing the food yourself together. Like you know, we have a family garden and, um, you know, by the end of the summer, I will say they're, they're a little, you know, they're not as excited as at the beginning, but I will, <laughs> they, they do take ownership in it and they are very specific on like what type of lettuce they want us to grow and what they like and don't like. Um, and it is really cool. I, I have a lot of memories of the summer of just like telling them to go out and pick lettuce for the salad and mm -hmm. they pick the ones that they like. And um, so it, it, it definitely is fun and they don't even realize all the, the benefits that they're getting from from eating all the healthy food that is yeah. available in their backyard. Oh, for sure. I, and I remember vividly growing up with my dad, you know, we had a big garden always growing up and he would he would be maintaining that thing every day and we'd come home and there'd be a pile of vegetables on on the countertop of what was going to be for you know for dinner that night whether it's squashes or tomatoes or whatever and he'd be doing yard work he'd, he'd pick a you know a green bean off the thing and dunk it in the pool for whatever reason like that's much better to eat rather than rinsing it off and then eat it you know so um you know he would just he would always do that and that i always remember that like when we buy vegetables and do things and talk about the garden i'm like oh man like my girls would have that those memories that i have about my dad you know right. so um, it, it's really important. And by the way, Sarah, don't sell yourself short on the not eating healthy thing. We saw your meal plans and meal logs yeah. from our challenge a few months yeah. ago when you did your thing there, girl. So don't sell yourself short. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I <laughs> and you know, what's funny is, you know, Danielle, um, obviously, you know her, your wife, but she is our director of education here at the Nest Schools. And she always talks about um, we we grow our own things here at the Nest Schools as part of our curriculum. And the parents have always said we've we've never seen our children eat so much lettuce and that's because they grew it at the nest schools and they had that buy-in so it's absolutely true yeah. um what are some simple tips to eat healthier as a family so i would say you know i think you know me especially i know john as well i remember when i was young my mom would make a meal and all four of us me and my sister my dad and my mom we would eat together as a family and that would give us time to connect, to really focus on the meal. And she would always make it very simple where it's like a healthy carb, a healthy vegetable, and a protein. Now, of course, I see that. So I embodied that and I carried that with me as well. And so I think it's something that you really need to, to do as a family. Slow down, understand that we eat dinner as a family. <laughs> My boys want to have the TV on. It's been very difficult trying to turn it, off, turn it off, but we're still doing it. They're still young. But I think too is is making them a, make that a habit, right? And if it's hard to do five days, then make it like three or two, something that's realistic and that you can accomplish. Also, make the the dinner something that's easy on yourself. So if you're like, I just don't know what to cook. A simple thing is healthy protein, so it could be chicken, steak, fish, healthy carb, sweet potato, potato, rice, vegetable, there's always no salad, could be asparagus, maybe some Brussels sprouts, broccoli, but that's kind of like an easy way to navigate what you should be eating. It's a simple way of kind of like 
navigating the compass of a healthy food. And don't overwhelm yourself with having to make every meal healthy. Just pick one meal, make it simple. If dinner is not realistic, then focus on breakfast. Maybe you make a couple of eggs, you have some blueberries, strawberries, and then maybe start incorporating like a little bit of avocado. It's a healthy brain food. So, and it's a healthy fat. Yep. So that's an easier, maybe less time consuming meal uh, that can be a good starter meal for the family. And you made a good point before, Brittany, about like having the kids pick out some stuff right at the store that they should be picking out rather than, you know, the double stuffed Oreos. So, um, which, wait, I was saying, like, <laughs> which, come on now, let's not, Mega let's, stuff. let's not Mega bash stuff. the Oreos. Um, <laughs> They're vegan. But it's, it's something that where if you can make snacks at home too, right? Because that's where we lose sight of our day a lot of times when it comes to healthy eating is the snacks. It's the in-between mm -hmm. stuff. The meals can be easy to stay on top of a lot of times because like Brian said, if you, if you get into a routine with those things, it's easy. But when you're hungry in between, what do you do, right? So set yourself up for success with those snacks is another huge priority when it comes to healthy eating. Um, and there's 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 fun recipes too that you can make. So we have our granola bars we can buy at the stores, right? But a lot of times those are just masked candy bars essentially, right? So let's find some healthier alternatives for some granola bars that the kids can make that they can put their own ingredients in that they want or that you can put your own ingredients in that you want. And a lot of times there are only four ingredients that go into these things and they're delicious. So um, really, really prioritize the snacks as well as the meals, because you're gonna lose sight of those, that three o'clock window when you're going, oh, I could really go for this right now, right? And then you can stop that craving with, with a healthier option. Right, and that's, you know, my kids just went back to school and I was kind of dreading the snacks because you're right, like in the summer, they're, they're pretty good, but you know, they have their snack time in school. And I was, you know, it's easy to kind of go for the already prepared, pre-packaged items. And mm -hmm. so I did something a little bit different this year. I went and tried to just pick up a bunch of different random, like healthier options to kind of see which ones they like. To I, I kind of got in the routine of continuously giving them the same things and then they got bored of it. So I'm trying to mix it up a little bit. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll have better success this year on the snacking front. So that is, yeah. And, and your kids gonna follow you. They're going to follow what you do. So if they see you sitting down and having a lot of snacks or unhealthy things throughout the day, you're, all you're doing is teaching them and showing them that that's what they should be doing too, or that's what they can do too. And if you say, you no, you can't have snacks. They're looking at you like you did, you know? Right. So it's it's important to set that standard and be the role model there because again they're going to follow your lead and and this obviously is is a, is a family platform here so be the example be the standard yeah great great advice well before we wrap up we've had a lot of great topics of discussion today um we did ask our nest builder community um, if they had any questions that they wanted us to ask of you in preparation for this discussion um so we have um, two questions that came in that we wanted to ask you that we thought were really good ones. Um, the first one was, what are some simple ways to get kids moving indoors in a positive or constructive way um, as they become more involved in wanting to play those video games? Yeah, for sure. Screen time's a big thing. I know, you know, when we take my girls to the doctor, that's the question they ask. How much screen time are they getting, right? It's, we have to be sure we are limiting that stuff uh, to our children. And and exposing them to more movement-based activities. Um, and, and I kind of just touched on it there a minute ago, but I think it's really important um, that your kids will see you being active and moving. Yes, we have, we have those jobs in the middle of the day where a lot of our time is consumed and maybe we're sitting down, right? But if we teach them the value of an evening walk, a morning workout, whatever it is, if a, a break in the middle of the day, However it is that you can lead by example, whether it's moving or eating healthy, that's where it all starts. Um, but aside from that, you have to, I think, incorporate creative things like your story there with, with your son about let's go hiking and, and hunt for bears, right? That you have to find more creative ways to present things to your kids, right? It can, if you say, let's go for a walk, are they gonna get that juiced up to go for a walk, you know? Or if you say, hey, let's get dressed up, let's go get some bear food and do what Brian did, they're going to want to go hunt bears every day, you know? So 
that's the really interesting part of it is we talked about it before be a kid yourself put yourself in their shoes how would they perceive movement as exciting and then you know expand on that and have them have them choose that activity be creative and, and be a little bit of a kid sometimes yeah and well like, or go ahead brian sorry you, say, you, you said a great word at the very beginning of our conversation is boundaries you have to set boundaries when it comes to like screen time almost like it's earned now my kids are very young but they're, they're starting to have like tablets and stuff like that. And so we'll get them moving into where it's like when it's time, almost time for bed, they can go in it for like a little bit if they wanna watch YouTube and Spider-Man or something like that, they could watch that. But beforehand it's, you know, no screen time, let's get up and move, especially we're approaching, you know, Sarah, I know you're in Connecticut, you're in New England, it's gonna get colder soon enough. There's gonna be snow, hopefully not a lot, knock on wood. <laughs> Um, but you know, we were saying things before, like tag, you know, hide and go seek. Those are simple things that involve movement that are fun that we could do ourselves. It'll tap into our creative juices as to where we could hide within the house, <laughs> you know. But also, like, I remember something that we did, me and my son, we did, uh, we just put three cones up and we had them, we we're almost playing like bowling, you know, it works on their, their coordination, it works on their aim. You know, look, teaches them how to throw a ball, you know, and then I'm showing them how to do it. Things are caught, not taught, like what John said before. They catch us, see what we're doing. And a valuable thing to do is to be present with your family. Take time to actually be with them. Forget about what's going on that's making you feel overwhelmed about work. Be with your family. Be creative. Use your imagination. Play tag you know, play hide and go seek. But those are some examples of things that you can do when it starts getting colder or if it's raining that you can do inside that your family will really enjoy. And it doesn't necessarily have to put an age limit on it either. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and you, you, you already kind of answered part of um, the, the other question we had with incorporating the fun. Um, another question was, what are some ways to make family walks? um more enjoyable so kids want to join in so i think bringing the fun element is super important like you've already talked about are there any other recommendations that you have for making walks more enjoyable for kids yeah you could always do scavenger hunts you know you could make something super easy that you know hey you have to find the you know these things to find it you know it'll make them more in tune with the walk but also we're huge into energy if you bring energy to, hey, you guys want to go for a walk? It's going to be so much fun. The likelihood that your family's going to want to go for a walk is pretty high, as opposed to, hey, you guys want to go for a walk. They're not right. going to walk on it. And what a walk does, especially like after dinner, there's been research shown that it helps with digestion. You're also adding more steps. You're adding more movement to your day. But it's a great way to connect as a family. It's less intimidating. You're not looking at them one-on-one. -on -one. So you can have deep, meaningful conversation, not only with your spouse, but with your kids. This, a lot of times what will happen is that we don't necessarily know how our kid's day was, and we'll just say, hey, how was your day? Very generic. They may say, oh, fine, okay. But if you get them moving and it's a walk and you can kind of say, what'd you eat for lunch? It'll get them to open up on something. And then they may be more likely to tell you what's on their mind if there's something that's troubling them. Right. It's less intimidating when you're just walking side by side rather than looking at them straight on, asking them all these questions, trying to peer into their soul. Mm -hmm. So use it as a way to connect, mm -hmm. bring the energy, be like, let's go for a walk. A scavenger hunt's a cool way. Um, looking for animals, you know, we we're fortunate enough to, to live by a trail as well where a lot of dogs go on that. So I say, boys, let's let's count how many dogs we see. It just gets them looking forward to a simple walk. Well, Coach Brian, Coach John, thank you so much for joining us and discussing the importance of family wellness. You've shared some great insights and tips for families to start implementing. You can learn more about Model Mindset by visiting their website, www.modelmindsetfitnessandcoaching.com. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Next month, we will jo be joined by our friends at Zest Pediatrics to talk about everything you need to know during the first year of life. 
Until then, thanks for joining us and go get started on creating a healthier, happier family.